Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pat Jones Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head football coach Pat Jones. This past weekend, the Cowboys went out to Boulder, Colorado to take on fourth-ranked Colorado, and Oklahoma State lost the game 41-22. But, Pat, with the exception of about a three-and-a-half-minute period there in the third quarter, I thought your ball club held up pretty well. What you Robbie, think? Well, Robbie, I think a couple of things. Number one, I think Colorado is a very complete football team. I don't know if they're quite as good defensively maybe as Nebraska, but I think they're much more complete. Uh, they can throw the ball a little bit better. Combination of Hagen, uh, Biemini, and Pritchard, the receiver, are three very talented players with that big supporting cast of offensive linemen. They can do a lot of things and do a lot of them well. I thought for us to, to win the ball game, have a legitimate chance to win, we're going to have to roll the dice and try to create some things, try to give them some bad plays. I think we're going to have to play near flawless, which is tough to do under any circumstances, particularly up there when they're rocking and rolling as much as they are. Now, I thought we played reasonably hard, Robbie. I, uh, you know, I thought we compete. We had ample opportunity to really fold our tent. And I know I've said this before, but I think that's important big picture-wise. Uh, and again, I think we, Gerald Hudson, I think, played a very good ball game. We'll talk about him throughout the course. But Colorado's awfully good, Robbie. Colorado has got a very good football team, and, and I think they've got a legitimate chance now, certainly, to win the national yeah. championship. And um, I, can't, I can't say we played well in all areas, but I think we competed fairly hard. Well, they certainly have a chance to – they've put themselves in a position to win a national championship for sure. It was an absolutely – Perfect day for football in Boulder. We'll have first quarter highlights when the Pat Jones Show continues. When the game started, it was 67 degrees, lots of sunshine and just a slight breeze. Oklahoma State won the toss and you elected to receive. Wind was no factor, so we wanted to, we won the toss. Uh, not that we thought we could rip down there, but we wanted to Try to do some. Mike mishandled this. We actually had a crease here and uh, a little bit deep in the end zone and came out. And of course, they've got us now down to 10 yard line. We had horrible field position early on. Tried to run the option into the short side of the field. Corner made a great play. Uh, you can see Gerald, and I think for people watching this, this show here, watch Gerald throughout the course of the afternoon. And quarterback draw here. Uh, got a replay coming up. Uh, Kenny makes a nice run. Again, from taking over our own 10 yard line up there and the place is going bananas and everybody yelling Ford makes a, a good run here and, and we do make a first down uh, feeling like again that we were not under any unrealistic ideas of what we could do moving it now this is okay catch this ball and he just could not get his feet down quite quick enough I mean this was one of those we had several this now we had the shotgun in uh, yeah, we were lucky right there they didn't intercept here shotgun again to give Kenny a little bit more time Okay, this is a nice throw and see we dropped that one right there. It had enough of this kind of stuff going on that really kept us from doing anything. Again, I wasn't thinking we could necessarily drive 85 or 90 yards and score, but uh, sure you'd like to catch them when you got the opportunity. And they, these guys here have got a very deadly kick return game. See, they get us out flanked a little bit right there and makes a guy miss him. And again, now they've got the ball down on our end of the field and uh, their first possession, you can see we're starting this blitz and stuff. We started Terry Henley at one of the corners and uh, in his first start, he missed him right there. We, we had changed some things, uh, this is some, some style, of, some similarity between the style of these blitzes and what we had done against OU and Nebraska. We had changed a few things. We did anticipate and rightfully so that they, they knew we would run it. We knew they knew they would, that we were gonna do it. And uh, again, trying to give them some, create some bad plays. Uh, Biamini ended up with 148 yards for the afternoon. He's a good back. This nice play here by Ainsley right there on Hagen, the quarterback. I thought Hagen, who is certainly a very, very talented player, very good player, uh, is a little healthier now than he's been maybe in the last month or so. He's been a little bit banged up. They did try to run him okay. This is a problem with this kind of stuff. Now they run play action, get a guy out of the backfield, and it's, it's hard to find him in the wash, and we turn him loose, and uh, Colorado gets down there seven to nothing. Uh, problems here are that we've got a chance to get bottled up again now, when they've got the momentum, feel the ball to goal line. Uh, their coverage units, again, are, are, are awfully good, so we've got bad field position to start with. Uh, and I know it right there. <laughs> <laughs> start at the 14 Okay, okay, okay. all right, drive. nice cut here. Good job, Gerald Hudson. Uh, interestingly, one of their coaches told me after the ball game, Robbie, that he said, boy, it, you know, Hudson might have been the best back on the field this day, not to take anything away from Biemini, who I think is a very good player, but 
Again, Gerald continues to perform well. Option, keep the ball, make a little bit, not much. And then when you're backed up down here on the road, uh, everything you get is, is, is important and it's not coming easy. Now we come back in, they, they force us to punt. This one, Kerry really, on, I said, you know, yeah, he hit this ball pretty good. Again, I thought Blanche, you can see we're trying to kick the ball down the sideline, keep it away from their dangerous return man. They decided to go for the home run. Uh, Clark had him covered. Of course, again, we don't we know what we're getting on the outside on the perimeter. You get basically man-to-man -man coverage. There you go, Scott Harmon. So Harmon, we started actually at strong safety. Fleshman at free safety. Got good pressure on Hagen here, and he's forced to overthrow. Again, if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to beat us throwing the ball uh, by and large, which and they did. They threw four touchdown passes on the afternoon. But again, if you had to do it all over, you do the same thing. Right. You just hope you play a little bit better. I think they are a little bit better throwing the ball either than probably over you in Nebraska. Hagen has got a pretty good arm. Uh, there's Hudson, and he gets spit back out. And uh, okay, here's a little option out of one back set. So I'm going to see, hold on to that ball. And we get it back here. But uh, the only thing about early on, we had a couple of drop passes. We had some motion penalties, I think, that, that disrupted us. Okay, nice throw and catch. Uh, Ford, Ronnie Fisher, first down. Uh, it's scary enough having to throw when you're this backed up. But, uh, okay, we had McKinney overthrows Mayfield on an out right there on the sprint out game, and we were still hit and miss. Throwing here's his option. Got it pitched. Okay, Gerald gets outside. Good run here. Uh, so you can see I think we're doing a pretty good job of mixing up stuff. The thing that was disruptive is that, that we had some penalties. I think, I think again, a combination of crowd noise, combination of us being uh, having to bounce quarterbacks around throughout the week because of injuries. And I think some of our guys were a little bit intimidated uh, in the setting. Kenny's going back, hadn't got anybody. Okay, Bobo, you know, really didn't know what he was doing there, and that's an ineligible receiver type deal there. And that was kind of a knee-jerk reaction. He just thought he was batting the ball down and, and lost it down, so we come back in. And, now we punt it. He nails this one. Boy, he really, really unloads on this. This is a 53-yard punt by which is Which is a good coverage here. Okay, good job. Uh, which is scary because their return people are so good. All right, BME on the sweep, not much. But this, we had a couple of pretty good series in here defensively. Again, when they've got the ball operating around midfield, tries to duck up on the option, it doesn't make much. Uh, again, the, 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 this stuff here is, is, is pretty disruptive, but okay, he's going back to throw. Uh, tries to throw a little screen, and we had it covered, and BM and he missed the ball. Now we've stopped him, they've got to punt. They're gonna punt us again, down on, on our end of the field. Okay, All right, out of the end zone. So we can see we've never really had good field position, but defensively, we've, we've had a couple of series in there where a uh, good throw and catch here that, that repeat Kirksey continues to play good, but now when they're playing with the ball around midfield, as good as they are, that's, that's scary at best. Okay, good job, this ball's delivered nicely. Robert catches it. Uh, you know, I, I, we've gotten a little bit better at certain things, throwing and catching. I can't, I can't say it's still anything other than really hit and miss. Okay, Cecil Wilson, short yards, but uh, okay, here we are, short yards again. Third and one. Third and one, Gerald makes it. You know, they're pretty physical up front. I mean, they've, they've got very good team speed. Uh, the two ends are certainly very good players. Defensive linemen are good players. Good job. Okay, good job, Robert Kirksey. Good job, Kenny Ford. Pick up of 17. So now we're out around midfield. Okay, here's Hudson. Breaks one, I'm sorry, Cecil Wilson breaks one. And you can see the competitive nature of this game. I mean, they're getting after us, and, and we're getting after them. And uh, now we've got the ball down there into the field. Okay, come back, play action. All right, here we go. Uh, Mayfield actually uh, got in, got pushed out of bounds and came back in, a good call. This was second and one. We thought we had a chance here. With, Kind of a waist down. You can see, let's see if they collision. Uh, Mayfield, okay, there, their corner jams him out of bounds. He has presence enough mind to get back in bounds. It's a good call. The ball's laid out there nicely. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Blanchard comes in, and the score is tied at seven. So uh, th that drive went a long way. I mean, we took the ball, and again, with that one being the big play, but we got ourselves out of a hole. 80 yard drive, 80 yard and drive six plays. Yeah, which is, again, not bad. So it kicks it, ball th kicks it through the end zone. All right now, Colorado's going to have to go to work on. They're on 20-yard line, so we've kind of turned the field position around, plus we've evened the ball game up. All right now, they're going play action. Over this, not a, this not a very smart play on our part here. Uh, you know, the ball was overthrown. I think Mike could really see it clearly, and we get a 15-yarder. I mean, things like this were, uh, you know, they need to have a little bit better presence of mind than that. Now, at the end of the first quarter, it's tied at seven. And we'll come back with second quarter highlights right after this.
Colorado is driving as we start the second quarter. The Buffs have it second and seven from their own 38-yard line. Well, here again, there's a tailback for not much. And we're hanging in there pretty good. You can tell that they've almost popped a couple, and you can tell this guy's has got a good enough arm. Of course, they threw it up in front of Terry Henley, and uh, you know their receiver's pretty good play. Oh, now this is kind of stuff. His ball just he drops a snap and it bounces right up to Hagen, and he gets loose and, and makes it seven or eight yards. Now he's going play action. Okay, we were backed off the tight end. Uh, okay, couldn't hardly get him down right here, but if if they if they got the guts to throw it, there's a quick screen. Okay, we miss a tackle right here. Almost, Satterwhite really plays his heart out. To, he, he, what a effort guy he is, what a good football player he is. But there's Biemini for not much. But, uh, you know, if they can throw it, there's gonna obviously be a chance that they're gonna catch it. And he almost came out of this one, Satterwhite again. Uh, but it's just, we're kinda hanging in there, kinda hanging in there, okay. And there, they got us covered one-on-one -on -one with the freshman, Harmon. Pritchard, I think Pritchard's probably the best receiver in this league. He's a guy that you hear the NFL folks talk about as possibility of going high, which right well, from the They so. admit they want to get the ball in his hands. Well, so that the, means something. Well, they got three guys that you need to get the ball in the yeah, hands right, of Hagen, right. Bienemy, and Pritchard, and that's mm -hmm. a little scary. We've done that been that way ourselves at the times, but that means you're a pretty good football team. Okay, here's Gerald. I'm going to sprint draw. Uh, Make some yardage here. And Hudson Hudson played good. Okay, this is it right this here. Right, watch here. this now. Uh, now, we get called for holding on this. This is really a shame. This is really a big league run here. We're going to see part of a repeat of it. Uh, big play again. We're, now we've got the ball to 18-yard line. Uh, Holden's called, and uh, it, was, it was called holding, so it was a call. Okay, watch this. All right, there we go. Uh, Gerald watch comes around. Watch his feet, folks. I mean, this this man can run. Well, uh, again, this is uh, Gerald. This is why I, I'm really proud, and we're proud of Gerald for what he has really gotten accomplished in this last month. You can see he's running through tackles. There's Cecil down there hustling. Okay, Hudson in the open field. This, if there was, uh, I think, a somewhat turning point emotionally in this ball game. Good job, Mayfield. It might have been this right here. Again, as opposed to us having it first down on the 18, now we're trying to run, draw out of a shotgun and snap it high. But uh, again, that's, that's, a, that's a big what if, and I don't know what it was enough for us to win the ball game, but uh, their crowd's getting all jacked up, and I thought we took an emotional dip right here. Have a little screen pass called, and their end came off and, and covered Ronnie Fisher, and we couldn't get the ball to him. Now, again, now so we've got to punt. They're going to get pretty good field position. He nailed this one pretty good, too. 50 yards. Again, right up against the sideline. Okay, come on, now break down. Let's make a play. See, we're missing some guys right in there. They had a clip called, I believe, Correct. if I'm not mistaken. That's it right. They moved. start from their own 24. And so they move it back. So, again, we, we've got some decent field position. There's Biemini. Breaking to the outside, okay, Chris Calhoun on the tackle here. As right, you can see, we're, we're blitzing most ever down, okay, he hit the Hemingway to full back and, and nothing there. So, uh, again, we're banging around with him. Okay, here's close up of Hagen coming back, All right, little play action right now. Come on, men, stay with him, stay with this kind of stuff here. Dude, he flips it underhanded. Bim and he gets it in the open field. Hagen and Bim and get in the open field against us, and it's a mismatch. Quite the guy made the tackle is Stacy Satterwhite, right there, 52. I mean, well, you got to respect this kind of stuff. Uh, Scott Harmer did not stay on the pitch. We had it played. And again, they get it out here, and they're, they're gathering momentum right now in a combination of several things. You know, they run the ball, good run here. Uh, again, the, the penalty on the sweep, uh, the, the two, the, when he flips the ball out there, and uh, again, they're gaining steam. They're at the end. They're down in front of their student body, and they're banned, and they're going wild. And try to run it up inside, get a little bit, but not much, right around the 20-yard line. And, Okay, here they come back in. Play action, he almost slips down. He comes out of it. Okay, this nice play, good play here. Scott Harmon, Scott Harmon. his first interception, I believe, is an Oklahoma State Cowboys, Correct. so we get it, good play. They had a penalty called, hey, this is a great run right here now. Watch this stuff, this is, this is a big league run all it the way like here. looks like a replay of the well, other one. Well, again, it? that's why I'm saying that, I mean, it was not clear cut if you're standing there watching who the best back on the field was, and again, I don't mean to take anything away from Merrick Biemini, but I mean, this guy's coming on himself and is really help, helping himself in a lot of ways. Well, if the 59-yard run had stood up, Gerald Hudson would have finished the day with 150 yards, which well, was... Well, yeah, and again, you get behind, you have average. to throw it a little bit more. And statistically, again, we weren't just trying to see how many yards we get Gerald, but uh, another good job. I, I, I would like to think that with what he's done the last month, he's got a very legitimate shot at being the first-team All-Big 8 back. I think, he, again, I'd like to think that both those two backs were on this field Right. Today, okay, we throw one incomplete. Kenny comes out, sprint out. Okay, nice throw, nice catch to Mayfield. First down, Oklahoma State. So, 
uh, you can see we're, we're mixing things up. We've got some more pressure than we needed, and he just has to throw the ball away. Uh, again, Colorado's pretty big and pretty physical up front. Okay, uh, a little, uh, we hit this later on. Again, they're just hoping we can get a little bit of a crease. Uh, we do hit it. All right, now this, now this, is, this is very untimely right here. The, yeah, see, we, we're trying to call an audible, and it's as loud as it can be. Shotgun is, is something that is new. I don't think we really handled it real well under pressure. I think it's the pressure mounted. So again, now we're forced to punt the ball way backed up. Okay, he, he hits this ball very 50, good again. 52 yards. 52 yarder, okay, now they, oh, come on man, let's tackle a little bit better. All right, there we go, we've got some people around there. So they've got, they've got the ball back. All right, here they come. About Play. four minutes left here in the half. All right, okay, throw and catch there. You know, Hagen has got a strong arm. He was drafted baseball professionally out of high school. Good tackle here by Scott Harmon. Nothing for BM. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit off and on, but, um, you know, again, he's got a pretty good arm. So he throws this ball a long way. All right, we've got Clark's got him covered down the field. So now Colorado has to punt. Uh, I thought that this is a fairly timely exchange here. Again, it's, it's 14 to 7. Uh, we've got a little bit of momentum in here if we could have sustained it right in here. Okay, all right, Kenny Ford keeps, uh, not nothing here. All right, now, all right, we're gonna come back. Let's see Second what happens. 13, Second yeah. 13. All right, come back, play action. All right, we had a guy, uh, you can see right there, see uh, the Mayfield had gotten in behind them. Now again, this is why I say this is, this is pretty, they clip, I think they call a clip right there. You know, big, inter yes, a big again, even though we, we hold them to a field goal here with 156, which, they do take the ball down the field. All right, watch this. Come on, get a hold of him. Get a hold of him, man. All right, we've got him down. All right, right there. Loss of six. Uh, if, if we could have held him out of the end zone, quarterback draw. Again, this guy running around here is, is very, very dangerous. Uh, I think we would have probably had a, maybe a little edge emotionally, but uh, unfortunately we didn't. All right, he comes back, throws there. Okay, miss a tackle. Uh, they, again, have got more throwing game uh, than some other people around. He comes back, his ball's deflected. Oh my goodness, Michael Woolridge, if we could have just got that ball caught. Right here at second and 10. Uh, down in here, the time's running out. Come on, we've got a chance. Come on, George Bright, stay with him. Now he dumps the ball off. All right, we're playing, boom, I think. Now they call a clip. So one of them hits our guys right, right there. You, you, and we were lucky they didn't get a touchdown. Uh, come on, come on, we've got some decent pressure here. All right, George Bright. And so we, we now we, we've done a few things and it's a and loss of nine. Clock's run, running out third and 13. Okay, he, Hagen goes back. All right, he's got a lot of time, dumps the ball off to a crossing route. Now we get boom right there. So we just kind of got hung inside. And again, they get their people in the open field. It is a mismatch. It was very obvious. He goes back, all right, throws this ball out of bounds. All right, now they're all get here and here they come in. And I think there's about 12, 13 seconds left. He starts scrambling around. Throws it here, there was obviously contact, but the ball was uncatchable, good call. They come in, kick a field goal. You know, it's 17-7, it's again, I thought if we could have held them out of there, made it 14-7, to 7, might have had a little bit of a chance emotionally. 17-7, to 7, you're still very much in the game. We're at halftime. The Pat Jones Show will continue in just a moment. We're at halftime. Oklahoma State trailing Colorado 17-7, to 7, and Pat, uh, statistically, it, it's really been a pretty even first half, didn't you Well, think? it really, it basically was a pretty even first half. Robbie, we, we dropped a couple. I wish we hadn't had some penalties. I wish we hadn't, because Colorado had some penalties too. But uh, again, in, in some regards, we were lucky to be that close. And in some regards, maybe if they don't call the long run back by Hudson or something like this, right. you had a chance to, to legitimately have the lead. But uh, again, I think our guys went in, <clears throat> excuse me, realizing that it, it, we got a chance to play with these people. We'll have to play good but uh, very much alive in the game. You, uh, the game plan uh, was to, to make Colorado throw the football. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that if they were gonna beat you, they'd have to do it with a pass. Were you surprised that they were able to, to throw and catch as well as they well, did? Well, no, not really. You're hoping that maybe he's gonna make some bad throws. With this stuff we were doing, Robbie, unlike maybe sometimes early in the year, there was no element of surprise here. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and they've got more throwing game. Hagen is very deadly when he starts moving around. He's got the ability to make you miss and, and move around and, and dump the ball off. And again, he's got a, a pretty strong arm when he's on throwing the ball. And I won't say necessarily was, but I mean, he's got a chance to, to do some things. So no, it really did not surprise me. Again, you're just hoping that maybe he's gonna make some bad throws at the wrong time. All righty, we're at halftime. Oklahoma State behind Colorado 17 to seven. We'll have third quarter highlights 
as the Pat Jones Show continues. Oklahoma State is trailing the fourth-ranked team in the country by 10 points as we get ready to start the second half. Uh, Colorado has the option, and they want to go on offense to start the third quarter. Wind was jumping up here a little bit, Robbie. We end up with the wind at our back in this quarter. It, it did pick up as, a, as the, the, the day wore on. We make a, Scott Harmon makes a nice play right here on Bimini. Boy, and this was a crucial series. I mean, for us, to, again, to have a legitimate chance to win, I think we're going to need to stop them here. And we've got them covered. Uh, get a sack by George Bright. <clears throat> I think the worst thing probably we can do to them is get them in long yardage, which is what we what happens right here. Okay, we go with the three-man rush. Uh, we've got them covered down the, the field. Now that we got somebody that comes loose back across, and uh, again, this this was a real big play. Okay, makes a guy miss him. Come on, fellas, stay with him. All right, get in. I thought that was a real big play. Again, I, I don't know. I won't say it was the difference, <clears throat> pardon me, in the ball game, but I think it was a big play. Now we come right back out and, and bang them around, but again, they're now operating down on our end of the field and look like we might have had a chance to stop play action. Again, the guy gets turned loose, nice catch. But with this stuff that we're doing, if they can get a back out and see him and find him and get the ball, there's obviously a real good chance that they're going to get turned loose. Uh, BME with a little bit of crack, but still not much. Rich Angel played a pretty good ball game, and they're operating now. Uh, off our seven-yard line, he comes. This kid makes a great catch. He makes a, this was a great catch. I saw it right down the sideline. Uh, I mean, we had him covered pretty good. They made a nice throw and a nice catch, but that's what good football teams do. Now Colorado goes ahead 24-7, to seven, and at this point right now, with the way the stadium was, uh, I, I got the distinct impression that we're losing momentum. Uh, again, I think that third down pass was a real big play. Nice little run by, by Scott Harmon uh, on, on the kickoff. Okay, now we come back and all right, give the ball to Gerald, make about four or five yards here. Uh, but, boy, you, I, I thought, hey, gosh, we're going to need to make something. Something out of the ordinary needs to occur right there. And uh, you know, that's, that's not going to happen. Okay, now shotgun, yeah, coming back. Okay, Kenny goes back. Little middle screen right here. Boy, we're just, all right, now this is where the fake punt occurs. All right, we, I don't know whether we got a replay of it or not. We just come. That's the first fake punt. We don't do this a lot. We've done it several times over here. If I can remember correctly, Rob, it's the first one we have not succeeded at. We had a guy in that come back and throw the home run, and, and they got one, and Pritchard makes him miss. But uh, there was something they were doing, and I, I really don't want to go into great detail, that, that we had worked on all week to, on this fake. Their youngster had presence of mind enough to feel it and see, and, and it didn't happen exactly like the, that we wanted it to. And, Guy didn't block somebody, and, and they stop us. Again, I, I think for us to have won the ball game with the way the momentum was going at that particular point, I thought we had to try to make something a little bit happen out of the ordinary, which which we certainly didn't do. But, okay, now you can see they're really gunned up. You know, they're right down in front of their crowd, and everything's okay. They're just going completely wild. Now we overthrow this. Okay, interception. They're going to get it uh, back down in here. All right, so you can see, boy, the place is just louder than it can be. And okay, now they come back, give the ball off to Bimini, and he hits a crack. All right, gets loose in the open field again. This is a mismatch with what's trying to tackle him. All right, and he goes down and scores. So we've seen bang, bang, bang. Now they've taken a commanding lead to kick the, the extra point. Now it's 38-7. Effectively, you're probably knocked out of the ball game. But, but and we'll see what happened here. Okay, we, we keep on hammering away. Well, you said that the, this was. Maybe where you were talking about, this is where a team could have folded their tent, but it didn't happen. Well, so. it really didn't. And, and again, I, I think uh, under the circumstances, I think you, you, you get victories come in, in certainly in, in small doses. And again, I'm not saying that the, certainly the end result was not what we wanted it to be, but uh, it, this is a nice throw and nice catch. We did not make a first down, but again, though, this place is, is, you don't get to full effect watching this place is going bonkers right now. I was really impressed. I thought they did a good job of crowd control. There were some oranges thrown and whatnot. They get a pretty good little punt return right there. McLuhan, who's a good kick returner, but uh, I thought the crowd control was pretty good. And again, he breaks into the open field right here. There's Satterwhite again, getting down there and selling out. And there's Chris Calhoun. And, uh, again, now we come back. They run some play action. Okay, he this nice, nice interception, Richie Ainsley, right here. Good job, Richie. Uh, again, with the way the momentum was going. I mean, they got a chance, and I mean, just to knock us completely in the head down here. And, and there, Ainsley makes a nice play. Good job, fellas. I, that shows a little something here. Come back, okay, draw play, uh, nothing. Uh, 
Okay, you can see they, they're a good defensive football team. They start spicing around and substituting some down in here. Second down and 14. All right, Kenny, Kenny goes back, throws. Okay, good job, Ronnie Fisher. Nice catch. Pick up a seven. Okay, here we go back to throw again. All right, Kenny now scrambles. Okay, pretty good run in here. Get the ball tucked and let's go. First down. First down. Uh, and, and again, I, I thought, I can't really ever say we panicked. I, I think we were a little bit intimidated. Boy, nice job here, Robert Kirksey. <clears throat> good job, Kenny. Robert got in behind their coverage and, and Kenny, uh, Kenny did seem okay. There's, we try, try to bounce this here, uh, not much. But again, I, I didn't ever think we folded our tent and, and you know, over the long haul, I mean, you, you're gonna get some good out of this. Okay, good job, Robert Kirksey. Uh, and there'll, there'll be some guy that's, that's in this lineup right now that, uh, that's a football player and, and, and man enough to, to, to remember this and remember the lessons that are learned. And, you know, it's not real easy to watch all the time. Little throwback screen here. Watch, he's going to put a move on this guy right there. That a boy. There you go. And that's why I say <clears throat> Gerald really competed. Okay, here we go. We've, people have seen us run this some over the years. First time we've run it in a while. Okay, good job. Let's watch the cut right there. That's a way to make a guy miss him. Okay, that's a way to make another move right here. So good job, Gerald Hudson. Gerald's probably the best player on the field right now at this point. Okay, good, good job, Kenny Ford. Good job keeping it up inside on the option. Got a nice little drive going here. Okay, here's Cecil uh, down to the three-yard line. So the, as, as now as the third quarter winds down, 38-7, to 7, but we got a chance to score. We'll be back with fourth quarter highlights right after this. Oklahoma State is working on a rather impressive drive as we start the fourth quarter. The Cowboys have it third and two from the Colorado three. Well, we tried to throw the fade here and uh, didn't throw it quite far enough. Uh, they had it pretty well covered. Okay, quarterback draw. We pick up the first down right here. It gets it down to one. Now it's first and goal. Okay, turn around, toss to Gerald. He goes in standing up. You'll see a repeat here, but uh, here's one was a guy. I think Vernon Brown. Got a nice job, Vernon. Good job of throwing yourself at him. Okay, good job, Cecil Wilson. Opens up nicely there against the goal line front, and Gerald scores. But again, this makes it now we go for two. Okay, uh, we're going to hit this. Kenny does a nice job of coming. Initially, it wasn't open. Kenny throws in. Good job, Robert Kirksey. Good catch. So now it's 38 to 15. And again, realistically, you probably haven't got a chance to win this ball game, but we're still hammering away. Okay, deep on side into the wind. All right, there we go. Miss another tackle. And. Uh, now they've got the ball out. Now they're substituting liberally now, uh, which, which I respect. I, uh, last time we were up there, we kind of, this thing was just about reversed almost identically. And uh, yeah, we did the same thing. They've got some other people in the ball game. We, there's Greg Mundy right there, the freshman nose guard. Okay, so this is Charles Johnson, who has started some ball games for them. He's played some at quarterback for them. Uh, he's got a little bit of make you miss in him too. He has not played as much as Hagan, but we stop him and now they're going to punt him. Okay, Mac, okay, balls in the, come on, get in the end zone right there. So now we're gonna start operating on our 20 yard line. I think they had most all their second unit defense in the ball game. Okay, here's Gerald on the sweep. All right, does not make much, but, and of course we had played both our offensive lines and you know, what we were trying to get accomplished here, and we substituted liberally. We wanted to keep the guys in the ball game. Okay, Kenny didn't put quite, didn't get air this ball out quite enough. Okay, and they bat it down, all right, Kenny goes back. Okay, let's see what happens here. Good throw, good catch, first Pick up down. 17. You right? know, I think Mayfield is getting a little bit better. I think his confidence probably got a little bit of a boost yesterday, making a few of these catches. Now, they banged him around pretty good right there. Got a little bit of a sore shoulder, but I think he's okay. All right, Ford goes back in, a little delay. Couldn't get the ball over there, rush, and we, he, Gerald would have run for a long way right here. All right, Kenny's coming back now. All right, now they're going to, right there, and he tried to dump the ball off. And, I don't know that that uh, you know I guess penalty because it was called called intentional grounding here. Uh, Blanchard comes in, makes another nice punt down the sideline. Okay, now we're going to get drilled right there. Okay, Derrick Jones freshman got outrun. They got turned loose down the sideline. Okay, somebody may I couldn't tell who that was. Made a nice play, knock him Gilden, out of bounds. Jason Gill, yeah, we had to put, put Gill on the punt team. Good job, Gilden. So uh, now they're going to come back, and there's still quite a bit of time left in this ball game. And again, this is their second unit, and. Uh, we've got a few other people around in the ballgame. Got Satter White out now. Johnson keeps up inside on the option. Okay, Joe King makes a tackle. And now they're down, again, down on our end of the field. I turn around, get the ball off the tailback. Did you hold on to him in? All right, not much in here. All right, they come in. Here's get the ball off to the fullback. They're just kind of hammering on down the field on us. Third down and six. Johnson goes back to throw. 
Okay, we got some decent pressure, overthrows him down the sideline. So now they're going to come in, have to kick a field goal, which again, I do not blame at all for doing. Guy hit a line shot, kicks it through. So now it, uh, it's 41 to 15. Uh, and again, they started substituting fairly liberally uh, down in here, which, which under the same circumstances that we, we have done the same thing in the past. All right, Ford comes back, gives the ball to Vernon Brown, sprint draw, nothing here. All right, because you see the winds jumped up pretty good right now, and we're going into it. But there was a personal foul in there against Colorado. All right, there so you, you okay, got go. Okay, go back and throw. Now. We had him open, couldn't get the ball to him right here. All right, now okay, now we're going to come back, deal it on the option. All right, good job, Gerald. Nice cut here. Good job. It's a way to keep your feet moving. It's a way Pick to compete. Up a nine. All right, to come back in here, turn around, pitch to Hudson on the sweep. Okay, that's a way to make a guy miss. All right, come back out. Pick up a first down there, Robbie? No, no we sir, don't. Here, this is okay this is there. Fourth and one. Yeah, fourth and one. Yeah, we get the ball off to Wilson. He makes the first down. So again, we're just we're kind of coming back, just continuing to play ball. Same delay that we couldn't get to the back before. We put Vernon in there, and he did get open, made a nice little gain in here. Pick up of eleven. All right, here we come back. Got Hudson back in the ball game. Sprint draw. Uh, good job again. I think Hudson again ended up with what ninety three yards or something like that. Cecil Wilson breaks into the secondary. Okay, runs over a guy right here. Repeat coming up. Uh, good job, Cecil. Again, Cecil. Cecil played a pretty good ball game. He normally is going to be, again, day in and day out. You always know what you're dealing with with the guy. He's always he's always going to compete and always going to play hard. A little play action here. Coming down the same one we had thrown earlier. We did get it in the seam. Kirksey did a good job of, of catching it and it touched down Oklahoma State. All right, there's a little play action right here. That right, kid's getting a little bit better at this kind of stuff. You can see he gets in behind the corner and the safety can't get quite over. Nice job, Kirksey. Nice job getting into the end zone. Right, again, I. Really proud of Robert, what he's done. Blanchard comes in, kicks it through. All right, now it's 22-41, uh, Colorado. Game's basically been decided here, but we're still going to keep on playing. All right, there we go, kick off. Boom, nice man makes a nice tackle right there. Well, okay. you got a lot of young players out there, Coach, and uh, both interceptions were picked off by freshmen. So Well, yeah, we've had, obviously, most of the year, we've had quite right. a few young guys out there. And, That's right. Uh, again, you just kind of got to make do with the best you can with, with what you got. But uh, okay, Fleshman, there you know, there's there's the guys there still competing. I, I didn't I didn't think yeah, I thought it was really a fairly cleanly played ball game. I didn't think as far as a, you know, guys fighting or anything, there wasn't really much of that going on. And they're they're a physical football team without question. Okay, we stop them, force them to punt. Okay, come on in. All right, Clark gets this ball caught. Now we're going to get a little bit of a turn right here. Well, he might have come out of this at one point. We got the ball <clears throat> about our 26 yard line. All right, Ford goes back. I throw a little screen out here to Vernon Brown. He's going to hit a little crease. Come on, accelerate. There you go, Vernon. Pick up of 18. So, again, we're still kind of battling around and moving the ball at times. Again, okay, get some pressure here. All right, yeah, there we go. That's the ill-advised throw right there. I'm afraid this guy's going to run it in and score. Okay, Ford kind of got over there and got him bottled up. I, I, you know, again, that's why I say we got a little bit better throwing the ball, but it's still kind of hit and miss. Bill McCartan's done a good job. And, you know, they got a lot of respect for that program and what they've done out there. We'll be back right after this. Over a million people have come home to Dodge Caravan, the original. The final score was Colorado 41, Oklahoma State 22. But, Pat, uh, when you look at the final stats, you actually had the ball longer than Colorado. So some of the things that you wanted to get accomplished, uh, I know you've told me, you know, you're, your goal is to win the next week and understand that. But you we were able to get some things accomplished out there. The well, Colorado again, game, it, it, Robbie, I think it's, it's all relative to a degree with what you know, the stage that we are right now. Again, I think we, we got out of there with a little bit of dignity. I, and I know mm -hmm. that's, that's something small, but I told the guys in the dressing room, hey, they, these guys are, will go up there again in two years. I mean, CU will come to, to Stillwater next year. And, and, and at least for us to get out with feeling like that we weren't totally inept at some things that competitive, we did get some things done. Again, I come back to it. We've got a lot of respect for what Colorado's done. Robbie, it's interesting to me a little bit off the subject. I mean, I've been going up there now for 12 years, and I've been up there when there were about 20,000 people in the stands, and really no one cared about CU football. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's full. Now they're going to the Orange Bowl for the second time. It's rocking and rolling. Bill and them have done a very good job of things. So, respect, I hate, kind of hate it that it happened at our expense, to be honest about it. But I, I do really have very high regard for what has transpired up there over the years. I think it's a real good lesson. I really respect the Colorado administration. I respect the Colorado people for getting done what they've done. And now they are reaping the benefits of that. And again, from respect standpoint, 
it, 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 I really feel that way. Well, they have one of the finest uh, programs in the country. It's taken a while, but they have gotten the job done. Gerald Hudson played uh, uh, very well for Oklahoma State this past weekend. And, and uh, another player who played very well is Robert Kirksey, the wide receiver. The St. Louis junior had five catches for 88 yards against Colorado. And uh, Kirksey has provided us our play of the week, the 19-yard touchdown catch. Pretty good effort. Well, it's a very good effort. Again, Robert is a guy that we as a staff are really proud of. He's got some athletic ability. He's not a guy that you're going to say is going to be a high-round draft pick or anything. But the guy really has kept on coming. He had a sore, a sore shoulder last week, missed some practice time. But good job, Robert Kirksey, play of the week. All right, and Robert Kirksey, uh, just a junior, so he'll have another year at Oklahoma State. The Pat Jones Show will continue right after this. We feel confident most everybody is familiar with the term impact player. He is an athlete who makes a difference both on and off the field. Every football coach in America is looking for him. Oklahoma State has certainly had their share of impact players over the years. And today on our Cowboy Feature Report, we wanted uh, you to hear from two such players, senior Cecil Wilson and junior Stacy Satterwhite. Coming to college, this is a large part of your life. And if, if, you, if you don't go to a place where you're going to be happy, where the people are going to like you, and where you're going to like the people, you know, it, it tends to really kind of hurt you as a person. And I think if you go into a college and, you know, everything, the environment, you like the environment and like the people that are around you, you know, you tend to do better. And that's what I was looking for when I came here to Oklahoma State. Coaches here, um, they, they treat you right, you know. they. They let you know how they feel, they work you, and like it's supposed to be worked, you know, and you just go out on the field and they make things get done. We've been to the Sun Bowl and we've been to the Holiday Bowl and we've also went over to Tokyo during my time here, and so it's, it's been nice, you know, it's really been nice. And I think uh, one of the best things was to go over to Japan, you know. A lot of people around here probably won't ever get the chance to go to Japan and play football, and I think it was very nice down there. After football is over, people have to wonder what they're going to do after that. And I think uh, getting your education and going to get your degree and going out in the workforce is very important. And so, you know, they stress that. You know, they let you know that football is not going to always be there. And to go out and get your education and hopefully you'll get a good job and be successful in the workforce. I had a chance to go to the bigger schools and, and I went and looked and, and I think just the atmosphere itself around OSU, the the friends, the way everybody gets along, how the, the coaches kind of are more personable here, and and it just seems like they care more about you here than at the bigger schools and more glamour schools. I, I don't know, that's just, that was my point of the view of it. I just, I felt more at home here. Uh, I just liked the surroundings more, and that's the reason I came here. During two days, they start you out, they kind of give you a schedule. And that helps you start scheduling things out through the year. It helped me. And uh, then uh, your coaches are always checking with you on how much study hall hours you got to have. And, and always making sure, checking on your grades, checking on how many classes you missed, if you missed class. And, and uh, always, always keeping in touch with you and always making sure. They always know about every step you make, really. Not always, but they, they know a lot about it and try to keep in touch with you about your grades as well as your football. I've really noticed a lot, I've become more responsible. Uh, I think a lot more dependable. I've really, the coaches have kind of taught me to be a responsible person and a dependable person as, as far as football and academics. And, and uh, that has really helped me a lot, I think. When I first came here, you know, I, I really didn't know what to think coming from an eight-man school. I really didn't think I was gonna get much playing time, but I came in and got the chance to play and, and it's just been, all just great ever since then. It's just been unbelievable, really. And uh, uh, the coaches have really helped me adjust to it. And uh, it's just been more than I ever would have believed.
Robbie, I, I think interesting here, I think you learn a lot of things about a lot of people. These two guys have, have seen the, the upside of it and they've seen the tough times. I think that one of the reasons I, that, that I respect and we as coaches respect these two guys probably as much as anybody we've ever coached, including the truly, truly great ones, is because that you, they are going to be responsible people. They are responsible people right now. With these two, again, you know exactly what you got every day. <clears throat> they're going to do what you tell them. Uh, they're, they, they legitimately want to make something out of themselves. And I think, again, big picture wise, we will look back <clears throat> seven or eight years or five years from now and we'll say these are the guys, the Cecil Wilsons and Stacy Satterwhites, that basically held this program together. And, and again, it's all relative to what you're dealing with <clears throat> at the time. But I've never been prouder, probably, and never been. I will always think it's a privilege to, to have coached these type of people right here. Sander White's got another year. Right. Cecil is through now, got one more ball game left. But including all the All-Americans and all the guys that have, have we've been to New York City to get Heisman trophies with, these people right here, again, I think we'll look back and say, these are the guys that literally legitimately gave us a chance when it was not real easy to get done. All right, Cecil Wilson and Stacy Satterwhite. The Cowboys will conclude their season on the road. We'll talk about that when we come back. I'm Joe Montana. A few months ago, I challenged any Diet Coke celebrity to come on TV and take a blind taste test against Diet Pepsi, but no one had. We're coming down the final stretch for another Big 8 Conference football season. Let's take a look at what happened this past weekend around the Big 8. Pack. Well, Nebraska 41, Kansas 9. Nebraska probably a little bit of a hangover coming off that lost to Colorado, and Kansas hung in there, which didn't surprise me. Nebraska ends up winning fairly decisively, apparently. Uh, Oklahoma uh, over K-State, that's about the way it happened. Apparently, K-State play, played pretty good in the second half. Now, Iowa State, Missouri, Iowa State kicks a field goal, I think, with about 12 seconds left mm -hmm. to win this game. It has been a little bit of a downer, I'm safe to assume, for Iowa State. You go into the season with high expectation levels. You know, Blaze Bryant, a good running back, got hurt, has been back. I, I have not seen the stats on that game yesterday. Peterson, the quarterback, you know, they've had immense highs and lows. They beat OU and Norman. They lose some ball games. Uh, what, they're four, five, and one, I think I'm correct in saying right now. It, all relative, right? I mean, normally, when the, the last times we've gone to Ames, it has been to secure a national ranking or secure a bowl bid, this type of stuff. Now they're playing for 500. We're playing, you know, to see who, where you finish in the Big Eight and all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and quite honestly, we're going to make this a crusade here to go up there and see. And, and I think our guys will play hard. We've continued oh, yeah. to do that. But it's, it's a big game. And again, that's all relative. I and mean, we've been up there again with things that are legitimately high stakes. But uh, for where we are right now, this is still high stakes for this football team. Well, it seems like it's been uh, kind of a strange year in a lot of different ways. I mean, Auburn loses a ball game this past weekend. Uh, Washington gets knocked off. Houston gets knocked off. Uh, it's kind of difficult to figure out what's going to happen on any given Saturday, isn't it? Robbie, I think we're going to continue to see this nationally. Yeah, somebody please explain to me, you know, Southern Miss over Auburn. Well, I know Southern Miss has been playing pretty good, and there's not that much difference. Uh, Washington is a three touchdown favorite at home against a struggling UCLA club. UCLA wins. You've seen so much of that stuff crop up throughout the course of the season and now uh, Texas annihilates third ranked Houston. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on and I think the trends nationally will continue that way. To me it points out the fact that there's not a whole lot of difference in a lot of people and I think it highlights the fact that that one or two of the key players can turn things around maybe a lot quicker than they could four or five years ago. I used to think you had to have five or six really real difference makers like you were talking about. Now I'm not so sure that you only don't have to have but one or two and surround them with some good soldiers and play hard and go do it. I think that's what we're seeing at the national level. Okay, Oklahoma State will finish the season on the road against Iowa State. We're out of time for Pat Jones at Oklahoma State University. I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody.